Hey everybody, welcome to Speed Bump. It's it's here. It's time. It's oh. time to finally wrap up January in February. So if it is wrapped up, seven minutes and thirty-one is the time. Finn's got it again. Uh, he decided to uh, help me out a little bit here during my time of tough finance tax season. He's gonna buy. 10 subs instead of taking $50 from me, so I'm going to go ahead and buy those now. Which still costs me money, but it costs me substantially less, and I, I get subs, so. Wow. And also, 10 of you get to have a sub, also. So here Generous they come. Bet. Let me, uh, let me get those. Before we do anything else, let me get that taken care of. Good luck. <laughs> that task is complete. All right. Congratulations, folks, who won one of those. And it's thanks for done. And nice work on the world record for Ophidia. That's good stuff. Uh, so we are going to jump right in and announce our new game, and then uh, I'm going to be playing it. It's Author Blue's pick, uh, so I'm going to let you read this for us, Author Blue's. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm. I am ready. How do you pronounce that? Uh, Sute Hakun. So the plot's pretty condensed from a Japanese manual. Once upon a time, there was an island somewhere uh, somewhere in the sea where a rainbow of happiness stretched across the sky. One day, this rainbow suddenly broke apart and its shards were littered around the island. Hakun must retrieve these shards to reconstruct the rainbow. Um, and we included in here a few lines. Um, there are rainbow shards that have to be collected in each level, and um, it's a puzzle platformer. It has some platforming to it, uh, but the main mechanic is injecting paint into blocks and enemies in order to interact with uh, the stage. So, it's a really cool game. So I'm going to be playing this blind. I've only seen a little bit of it. I've seen enough to determine that I, I agreed that it would be fun looking to try. Uh, we weren't sure what version to use yet until we decide that. Uh, we're not sure what the world record will be, but uh, I'm going to put 20 minutes into... This is... There's five versions of this game. I don't know what the other one you were talking about. Do you know which one that would be? Which one of those four Satellaview games it was? Yeah, so this is the original Japanese version that Smite's going to be playing. There is a speedrun already existing of the um, early Satellaview version. Um, this early Satellaview version uh, had 50 levels and 5 bonus levels, so it was about half the length. Uh, that world record is about an hour. I'm certain that it can be improved upon. It was sort of a... Um, it, it was a run that hasn't been done over and over. Uh, but we're talking about sort of feeling this one out a little bit. Um, by the end of the broadcast, we'll know definitively, but we may either use the same event version that's on the speedrun.com leaderboard that already exists, or we may just do a partial game category of uh, the original SNES one, or if people really want to, uh, you know, cut their teeth on it, there is the original SNES version, which is 100 levels long, so. Let me get this on screen and I'll get uh, started here. There it is. Uh, that name is incorrect, too. There we go. Okay, so... I'm going to start. Oh, so we're gonna we're gonna update the website with all that new information um, in a bit here after the show, and it's gonna be um, the clock will be on there. So you have you know, the clock is definitely. Let me let me see what day it's going to be. The clock is definitely going to end on the 29th at 11:59 p.m. So this is your game for the whole month. You have four weeks. Yeah, almost four weeks. Three weeks and six days and etc. to do this. Let's do it. I heard this game has um, a very extravagant soundtrack and style. Yeah, it's really, really good. Rules. What are, can I change the rules? What are these? Hold on. Animation on everything. 
Okay. It's it's not options, it's just telling me what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, telling you what the rules are. Yeah, this is a fan translation. The actual uh, speed bump for this month will be played on the original version, but we thought it might be fun to show off actually being able to read the text. Yeah. Uh, let me just back. <laughs> yeah, I love that. All right, let me just back up and uh, give this a shot. So I'm gonna start a clock now. So you can exit out of this uh, tutorial if you want to, but it'll show you everything about what you need to know to play this game. I'm going in. <laughs> there we I, go. I'm going in. I did see this a little bit, but uh, I don't. It's been a while actually since we looked at this game. It was before we chose our first game. I think we were looking at this one. Yep. What am I doing with this paint? Oh no. Yeah, this is what I remember seeing. There's a lot of uh, weird stuff going on. I cannot remember for the life of me what I do with this paint. Uh, you inject it into the block. Not this way. Manually. Oh, I see. So in the case of blocks specifically, uh, a red block goes up and down, a blue block goes left and right, and a yellow block goes diagonally. There you go. So there's... And the puzzles really ramp up. Yeah, that's what I figure, and uh, it's gonna be one of those things where obviously knowing the solution matters a lot, but there's still work to be done, and mm -hmm. uh, optimizing that is gonna be tough. Yeah, and not just uh, by optimizing the intended solution, but there's a lot of really unintended solutions. Things where you can put blocks in places where it doesn't quite make sense, and you can sort of circumvent the, the intentions of the puzzle a little bit. How was that? <laughs> I did something. The game really ramps up. By the third and fourth world, the puzzles start to get pretty tough, even casually. So, um, oh, this will this will definitely be a test of people's um, abilities if they want to play through it blind. Um, but I think coming up with the actual solutions, like solving the puzzles, will be really interesting to see. Oh, it doesn't go high enough. So you can move the, yeah, you can move the blocks around. Crap. I've, I've screwed it up real bad. <laughs> let, me, let me try this. Yeah, that, that other block go. was just in my way and it wasn't actually there, I guess. I was wondering if I could uh, suck it in vertically. Am I missing any controls? Uh, no, this is this is pretty much it. What uh, makes the later levels more uh, difficult is that um, it'll start introducing enemies, and those enemies can actually have paint injected into them, and they do very different things based on their colors. So there's a lot of variety in this game, surprisingly. Blue. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. When you spit out a block, if you hold down the Y button, you can actually move it up half a tile by pressing up while you're still holding Y. That's a useful mechanic to know. So hold down Y oh. when you spit it out. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be the Kirby while I'm waiting here. Hmm. How the heck am I gonna do this one? <laughs> Oh no. Uh, so this puzzle this puzzle's trying to teach you the idea that every time you put paint into an object, it um it sort of resets its origin position. And so if you take the red paint out of the block and then put it back in, it'll treat that spot as the bottom of its cycle. I see. Oh no. My incompetence is showing through. I've soft locked it. I know what I need to do, I just uh, completely botched fixing it. I just, it needs to be in the center, not in the side. Right. Yeah, once you get the hang of these puzzles, they become quite uh, fast. I think I think as far as puzzle games are concerned, this one's very speedrunnable. Yeah, this looks good. I like action puzzles. Now, if you're if you're unfamiliar with a Satella view, you want to talk about that? I know what it I know what it is, but oh, this one didn't reset. 
Yeah, so the Satellaview was um, uh, Nintendo's original attempt for um, doing games that could be broadcast over satellite. So you would um, have a special piece of hardware. Um, you would have a special piece of hardware and special cartridges. And those cartridges uh, could actually download games when they were broadcast. So you'd have like a window of time, like two hours on a Thursday, where you could download a game and play it. Um, and they were often quite unique, the way that they were used. You could um, download a game and they could broadcast like special events, they could broadcast high score information, they could even broadcast uh, for some games, like audio tracks that would go along with it. So for instance, um, there was a version of A Link to the Past called Ancient Stone Tablets that um, was sort of a uh, an addition to the game. It was based on that engine. And they had like a whole audio track that went along with it. Oh no! Come back, block! Wrong way! Yeah, the, the direction, I learned that last level, the direction you put it in matters a lot. Right. That was confusing me at first because I thought if it was moving right, then it will keep moving right, but it's based on um, where you're standing. Oh man. Come down here, block. Okay, I think we're in an okay state now. Oh no! I did it again. You and me need to ra blind race puzzle games. This might be my one shot to actually beat you in a blind <laughs> race. I'm pretty good at Kickle Cubicle. Okay, okay I haven't played that. That's our glorious one. Mm -hmm. Oh no! I'm pissed. Come here, Cube! I gotcha. I gotcha. This is actually a great demonstration, though. I mean, none of that was the intended solution, but you did it in fewer blocks. Um, and I think there's a lot of potential throughout the game for opportunities like that, being able to, you know, not do the intended solution and actually make it quite a bit faster. Hmm, this one's wild. What's going on? That lifting the blocks ability is coming into play here, I think. So this version of the game that Smite is playing right now has 10 worlds with 10 stages each. So it's it's 100 levels. And I don't personally have a good sense for how fast a speedrun of it would be because no one's done a speedrun of all 100 levels. Um, I think I think it's realistic to expect that a good speedrun of all 100 levels could probably be in like the hour 30 range. Um, that being said, if people feel like that's... Uh, a big ask for speed bump, um, especially on this, the shortest month of the year, um, then maybe we can do something different. I wouldn't be opposed to doing um, the event version, the Satellaview version, because that actually already has a leaderboard, uh, which is sort of an attractive uh, option for that reason, or potentially doing just a partial version of this game, like just play up to uh, you know, the end of World 4, for instance. Yeah, I think uh, this game is going to be wild. People are really going to have to pay attention to how other people are solving these. Uh, because there's going to be a million choices on all these stages. Like, I'm already running into, I feel like, a lot of options for these. And uh, one of them is going to be the fastest. Yeah, at the end of the day, for doing a a month-long speedrunning competition, um, you don't necessarily have to find the optimal solution for each of these puzzles. You just have to find the most optimal solution you can do consistently enough We're to do throughout the whole right. game. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Ten stages per... So now we run into a new element. Eating through cubes. Yeah, this is definitely the most experimental thing we've done so far. Every other game that we've done so far either already had a speedrun or we were confident that it was going to be quite short. Um, this is the first one where we're going into it uh, not entirely knowing what to expect. So um, we definitely are going to be uh, a little bit... We're going to consider what we actually want to do for this one based on interest. Um, we don't want to throw a two-hour speedrun at people and then no one participates because it's not interesting to do a two-hour speedrun. Yeah. I wouldn't be adverse to a two-hour speedrun or something if I really liked it. Like, I right. I like Link to the Past, obviously, as a speedrun and, and the randomizer, but I wouldn't make anyone uh, do a game that I hated. <laughs> Damn, what is this? I, I think I need to... 
No? Can't seem to make that jump, so I gotta figure out something else entirely. I'm gonna get it. Oh, that's smart. Hell yeah. <laughs> Easy. Uh, so I think a lot of these levels will turn out to be, you know, 20, 30 seconds long if you know what you're doing. So yeah. 100 levels still is, like, I mean, has the potential to be uh, a 30-minute speedrun, but I don't know if that scales throughout the whole game. I've played most of this game, but I don't even remember how long the later ones were because I was treating it like a puzzle-solving game, not a speedrun. There we go. Uh... I want to mention that the rules for payout at this point, I'm pretty solid on. If we have 10 runs on the board, then I will give a prize for the second and third. That's the kind of the requirement. We need 10 submissions of any reasonable... Like, I have to look at them and say, yeah, this person actually tried to do a run. And it, it can't just be like, you, you just submitted your first playthrough ever and that's it. Now I'm looking for actual times. <laughs> right? But... Uh, if I've determined that they are legitimate runs and you have 10 of them, I will give a prize to second and third. Otherwise, $50 to the first place. In this case, I think I'm doing 100. I'm not sure about that yet. I'll let you know on the on the website. I need to move this cube. Yeah. So there is a reset button in case I fall down the left there. You can absolutely soft lock on a lot of these levels. That's one thing I've noticed and I've been trying to, to not do. Um, I think I'm needing this to be yellow, but maybe this can work yeah, anyway. You to, yeah, you might have needed to change the color before you did, um, yeah, I think that can still work easily. I think, uh... They probably expected you to change to yellow before you took the block over. Yeah. Cube time. Oh no, they're all... ...janked up, what the... Hey, there we go, we can just... Screw them up that way. Yeah, I guess that's probably the intentional lesson for this one as well, because um, the game doesn't let you like clip into things, and it doesn't just like knock you off of a block. Instead, uh, if you are on top of a block and it uh, hits the ceiling, then it just turns around immediately. Two six. I uh, I really blew it there. <laughs> I'm just start over. Uh, I think I need to uh, move this cube through the wall before I do anything else, or else I'm stuck. Just immediately lost that one, I think. So I'll say my opinion, and um, again, as we, as I said, this is sort of an experimental um, choice for us, so I don't know, I, I'm, I'm interested in hearing feedback from other people, but uh, I'm most inclined to probably pick the event version. Um, I can I can uh, find the resources for that so that everyone has access to it, since it already has been speedrun before, um, which will probably be helpful, and also uh, because it's half the length of this version. Oh no! <laughs> so the event version is half the uh, length of this one. This one is uh, this one is um, 100 levels long. That one is 50 levels long. Shit. <laughs> Curses. I gotta figure out how to get that color to be more useful without dying horribly. I think it wants you to place the blue from the left so that you can use it to get yourself out of the pit once you change the color. Yeah. I need, I need the red. For sure. And you probably want to bring that block out as well. That is a way to do it. Come here, red. <laughs> I think I need to drain the color first, unfortunately. So I don't know in general if the score has any value, but I do know that... Um, oh no! The, I do know that the Satellaview version of the game, um, when it came out, 
Uh, the first week that they broadcast it, they uh, released the event version, so 50 levels plus 5 bonus levels. And then the second week that they broadcast it, it saved your saves, and they broadcast a version that had a global leaderboard as well. So, like, your scores went in, and you could see how you how you stacked up against other people. There we go. I feel like I need both blocks. I'm just assuming I do, really. I'm not 100% about that, but I think I do, so I'm trying to get this one out of there. And I think the only way to do that is to drain it first and then turn red. But I feel like I'm really screwing this one up. Yeah, I'm not sure this method's gonna work for you, because you're not gonna be able to get embedded in the left wall uh, in a way that you can grab it back out. I think you're gonna have to do it with just one. Okay, wow. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, this one's just not coming up high enough, and uh... Oh, you're gonna soft lock it if you plug it in there. Or not be able to get up to it, at least. Let's see here. I think one and a half blocks is the highest you can jump. Oh no! I have it, I just need to poison that block, alright. That was tough. That one took me a long time. What's the penalty? I haven't been hit by that yet, and you'd think I would have been hit by that on that last one. Hmm. I'm not 100% certain. <laughs> I'm having a good time messing up these... These cubes, okay. The range is pretty generous on that. Yeah, it lets you do some pretty wild stuff. It looks like it's just barely longer than, than one block width is your range. <laughs> I'm just I'm just doing this. I don't I don't need Red br bricks, I just need bricks. It'll do. It'll give me what I need. Maybe. This sucks, actually. This is no good for business. <laughs> I know what I need to do. Um, I need uh, this one to move. Yeah, if I jump on it, I'll screw it up and it'll let me... Uh... Oh no! <laughs> this is no good! We're going lower. This is actually a game I've had my eye on for a long time to speedrun, but... Um, oh no, I guess I'm just outsourcing the labor then, at this point. <gasps> yeah! 2-8. Easy. Well, I got two minutes left to try and finish World 2 here, that's where we're at. Oh, you can quick save in order to... Um, probably save a partial solution but incurs a penalty. Got it. Okay, so I just fixed this one by moving it up half a tile. And now... Yeah, need... you probably need it embedded in the wall, but that's not oh, doable. Piss. Oh, I know what I need to do. Oh, I, need to I get see it up your there. solution. Wow. You could embed it in the wall. I... No, you can't, because you, you need to mess no. with the color. You need to hold the you need to hold the color as well. Dang. I've got it. In order, I think. <laughs> it's just not high enough. Almost. You can um you can just hold your beak out and it will um it will absorb the color at the highest possible spot. Which oh, awesome. I, which I think is exactly where you want it to be. It's gonna work this time. One more of those. Yeah, that's my max jump height that it's grabbing that way. Now here's my issue, and I think I can solve it with a regular cube, so... Oh yeah, that's just high enough. Wow. You can just dish the paint. I don't feel that level has too many other solutions. But some of these have been pretty complicated. Well, I'm dead. Now I'll be fine, it's fine. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> jump, Hakun, jump! Let's, uh, let's make a bridge, and not be an idiot. That's gonna be red. And you also need to watch out for that pit up at the top if you're keeping an eye on it. Yeah. 
I was thinking about using a yellow on this last one like an idiot instead of doing anything reasonable. I'm just gonna make a diagonal no, I think, go through the wall. I think that would work. Yeah. It's gonna be amazing. Check it out. These are my moves. <laughs> yeah! Yep, those, are good, those are good moves. Hell yeah! Alright. <laughs> 210 in time. So it took me around 20 minutes to beat 20 of these stages. Uh, okay. Blind. Uh, they're the easy ones, I'm sure, but. I still think it's probably reasonable to expect that you could complete it at a rate of a level per minute on average, even as the levels get much harder. What's that? Once next, you know the solutions. Next step up there, do you know what that is? Uh, I think that it unlocks the next world once you've completed that number of levels. So you don't have to actually complete. Um, all 30 levels to get to world 4, you just need to complete 25 to unlock the next world. I see. Yeah, that's it, they're still locked, so you're telling me there's 10 worlds, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they unlock as you make progress. Well, I don't think... Uh, so you need to, you have to do all of them, though. Ultimately, even though you can skip them. Right? Or is it, or I'm not 100% certain about... I, I don't know that for certain either. Um, I know that you unlock later worlds. Um, I wonder if there's a way that you could construct sort of in concept in any percent category by uh, allowing yourself to skip the unnecessary ones just to get to world 10. I guess, I mean, we need to decide today, hopefully, uh, if we're doing any percent or 100%, I guess. And that would be a difference there. And also what version we're playing. So the existing run that's already out there is for... Um, me. Let me pull it back up again. Oh, it's right here. Uh, it's the Sute Hakun event version, any percent. Um, and I, I'm of the opinion that I think that might be a better one to choose. The world record right now for that one is an hour and two minutes uh, for doing any percent on that one. Um, it's the same levels, same mechanics. It's just only the first 50 of them, if I'm not mistaken. I think we should do that one too, but... Do you want to do 100% or any percent if it's possible? Any percent, uh, any would, percent if it's possible, yeah. It would let them skip at least five of the hard levels is what would happen. They would skip five of the uh, presumably most interesting levels. In this case, is my case for doing 100%. <laughs> yeah, the category rules for this one uh, says the timer starts when you select an empty save slot and it ends when the high score starts to fade away before the credit roll. So, um, I think you do get credit, uh, you do get credits at some point, um, and there seems to be a 100% category as well. Must clear all 10 practice levels, 50 bonus levels, and 5 bonus, or 5, 50 levels and 5 bonus levels, so, uh, I think this any percent does let you skip some levels. I think we should do that, and they can figure out which levels are the worst to skip. Yeah, so we'll find the material for that, we'll do the event version, um, any percent. The world record's right now an hour and two minutes. For 50 levels, uh, on average, a minute, even as they start to get harder, I imagine that time can come down. Mm -hmm. I mean, based on what I just did, I know those were the easy ones, but again, once you know the solution, how hard do they get, how complicated do they get to, to do when you already know what to do? Right. I didn't know what to do and I got stuck on one of those levels for like three minutes. <laughs> I think it, I think it'll be a good one. Well, that's our, that's our game, and uh, I'm going to put all that information on the website tonight, so check it tomorrow, and uh, we'll have all of that down for sure, but this is our game. And yeah, I'll link to the leaderboard on Discord and also additional material that might be helpful to have, so um, if you're planning on participating, considering participating, or just want to play the game that everyone else is playing, uh, hop on the Discord server and uh, check out the Speed Bump channel. Yeah. Well, we'll see you next week, folks. Thanks for joining us, and uh, thanks for the pick, Author Blues. Thanks for putting this one together. Yep. I'm gonna it's going to be fun. This one to YouTube, this, uh, this speed bump update, and uh, get cracking on that website stuff tonight. Thanks All for joining right. me, everybody. Oh, hold on. I have a guest. The guest must appear. <laughs> oh. Nice. She checked you all out. All right. Y'all have a good night. Bye.